Hi, so here we are again. So let's just review where we are. We're now just about to put the twin motors back on. So uh, we've got everything down to this stage here. So let's take the axle out, just remind ourselves of what we've got. Remember we can't get it off this side because the circlip is still on there. So pull it through and just have a look. A key thing to notice is this small hole here. Hope you can see that. Well, not a hole, it's a sort of an indentation or whatever you like to call it. That's quite an important thing for us to, to think about. Anyway, um, we'll just put this down for a second and have a look at the, the mounting kit. It comes looking like this. And you see there's the two bands that hold the motor held on with long screws with nylocks. The first thing to do is to take the nylocks off. There are two there, I've already taken one off. And pull this off, which of course, because it's video, doesn't want to come. Ah, oh, a plane going overhead, the joys of living near Heathrow. Take the other nylock off. And again, there, there was originally two there. And we now end up with this, this plate. Remember that we had four bolts holding on the original single motor uh, assembly. So what we do, and I find it best if you hold it like this, and then slide the heads of the bolts past the plate like this. And then we just use the same nuts and bolts line them up and screw those four bolts in nice and tight. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the camera at this point and just put those together whilst at any point you look at me putting four bolts in. So here we are, I'm just doing up the last of the four bolts nice and tight, making sure the spring washers are in place. Okay, so the back plate is on. We now take the motor assemblies. There's a bit of a fiddle because these are somewhat spring loaded, so you've got to try and squeeze them together, line them up, and fiddle them on. It is a bit of a fiddle. And then get a nylock on just to hold it in place. Very good for you to grip this. Alright, so that's one on. And you'll notice, by the way, that they seem to point up at quite a weird angle. Uh, they, they're not horizontal, they point upwards like that, so do make sure you get them on the right way around. Put the second one on, again, bit of a fiddle, squeeze to get the two together, get the nylock on to hold it in place. Tighten those up and put the other one on in a moment. So now what we're going to do is to put our motor on. Let's go and get our new motor. Now you'll notice that there's a lead coming out of the motor. This is my old motor. You'll also notice that there's a gap at the front here. So let's just take that out again. Let me show you it. Poke the wire down through the mounting, use the gap at the front so that you don't pinch the cable here, put the motor in and twist it round into its correct position. Get the other motor, so same idea, poke the wire down, put it in kind of the wrong way round, twist it round, doesn't matter which way. Okay, let's see if this thing sort of lines up. So, 
in it goes. You might want to oil things up slightly before you do this. It just makes life easier if you can. But before you get any further, do remember this little thing here. All right, this is the collet that we need to make sure goes on next. We'll put this on there. A little bit tighter as things are starting to line up. Make sure that the second collet is put in place. There we are, it's on there, you probably can't see, but I have put the collars in there. Put the collar, push it through, put the bearing on the end. Sometimes it can be a bit of a tight fit. And of course it will be this time. Might need to shock that on. No, there it goes. And in we go. So, let's just think about those steps again. Make sure that the collar is there. The collar is there. We now need to put the circlip back in there. But before we do that, there's a problem. And I'll show you on one here what the problem is. If we look along the shaft, we see that that's where the ball bearing is going to go. But the trouble is that that used to be in the middle. So what we're going to have to do before we do anything else is to drill out a couple of holes that the new ball bearings there and there will go into and the grub screw is going to go down on. Now this is quite a scary process to be honest. I didn't enjoy doing it when I did it the first time. But what you do is you simply make sure that everything is in the right place. It is. You notice I still haven't done these up yet. I, I still want that bit of freedom just to make sure that everything's lined up and you know there it is, it twists nicely, no problem. And then to look at the holes that are in the output from the gearbox, you'll see a hole there and a hole in there. They'll be in different positions depending on uh, how you uh, how you set the, how the motor's been sent to you. Now, what you need to do is to drill a hole in there, which is big enough that the ball bearing will go half into the hole on the shaft and just proud into the collar, into the collar here. Because it's the ball bearing that takes the stress of the torque, not obviously just a silly little grub screw. If we had that grub screw holding all that torque from these twin motors onto that shaft, it would just shear in about five seconds flat. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get my trusty drill and I say this is a bit scary because what you really don't want to do is you know to start making holes in something that you're not used to making holes in but I'm afraid you're just gonna have to do it so that is what I'm gonna do next so I'm gonna use the existing holes to give me a guide to tell me where the new hole should be Okay. So of course the question is how deep do you actually make this indentation that the ball's going to go in? Well it's a bit of trial and error. You take the ball, put it in the hole, and then try and get the collet over the top. It will probably jam. That means that it's too high because you're already trying to connect this sleeve that comes out of the gearbox to the main shaft. So if it's not quite deep enough, what I find is that if you twist the shaft, what happens is it pops the ball up so you can grab hold of it, put it back in your little box of bits, line up the hole again, give it another bit of a drill,
Try and find the ball bearing in your little box of bits. Drop the ball bearing in. Test fit the collar again. Ah, right. Just lovely. So remember, it's the ball bearing that transmits the thrust to the shaft. And so that works beautifully. So now what we can do is to get our grub screw. And the grub screw only sits in the collar. The grub screw's job is to keep the ball bearing in place. So let's screw that back in. Oh, I've got it misaligned. There we go. I'll do that up with the hex key in a moment. I'm just about to do this side, so um, worthwhile by the way, just making sure that, that is tight in because you've got to get these things so that there's no movement. Just get the that one's in the right place. So I'm just going to start on this one over here. It's exactly the same process. Line it up. Uh, obviously when it's at a funny angle like this you can't push so hard. Okay, let's try the ball bearing test. Ball bearing in there. Put the collar, will it, will it go? And it does go. So that's perfect. So we've actually done the scary bit now. Um, so I'm going to switch the camera off, go and have a cup of tea and a fag, and then we'll just do the very last bit. Okay, so here we are then. Um, what I've done after my little break is I have done up these nylock nuts here, make sure they're nice and tight. Everything's now really rock solid, but there's a problem. And that is, you notice when I uh, drilled out to put the ball bearing in, I've ended up with a whole load of swarf, which has been attracted to the magnets in the motor. So we need a little bit of rag maintenance get that swarf off. Probably the engineering people amongst you are dying a death at this point at my my poor engineering. Maybe I should have taken it off, but I didn't. It's a sealed unit. It should be alright, but you don't want that swarf hanging around. So I'll just get the last of those little bits off down there. Good. Okay, so we've already got the circlip. So we just need to put back on the end cap. That goes on with three screws, I won't bore you with that. But what we do need to do is to get the circlip on at this end, which fits just in there. Now at this point, I will tell you, I've already tried to do this once, and you might hear me now, I'm on gravel. Don't do this maintenance on gravel, because when you drop something like that, it takes forever to find it in the gravel. Anyway, here we go. Let's see if I can do it without dropping it on the gravel this time. So, onto there. Pull it out. Slide it along the shaft. Into the groove. And there it is, nice and tight. Right. We're getting very close to actually wiring it up. So you remember that... Uh, here we have one wire, red and black. And in this case, we've still got the connectors on. So what I'm gonna do is to cut the connectors off and then we'll get on to the next part. Just about a half centimeter or a third of an inch or 0 0.001 of a furlong or a third of a bushel or whatever it was that you learnt at school. Right, so we've now got these wires. As you'll notice, we've got two reds and two blacks. You'll also notice 
that the wire that comes up from the control blocks has got a red and a black. The wiring is dead simple. Black goes to black, red goes to red. Now what you might have been given in your kit is this little white box and in it is just your basic connector block. Brown, same as red. Blue, same as black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up the blacks all together, the reds all together. That of course should be the other way around. The red goes to the brown. So it'll end up like that. So when I come back, what we will see is all the blacks connected together, all the reds connected together. Okay, so let's just do that. Okay, so where we've got to uh, put the shear pin on this side, put the shear pin on that side, screw the end caps on, three screws on each side, and I've wired up the block. So let's just have a look at that. I don't know if you can see it. Red, red, brown, red, all connected together. Black, 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 blue, there we go, all connected together. What you get supplied is this little white box. So this is a bit of a fiddle, it's a bit tight. But if what we do is just slide the wiring into the box. I say it's a bit of a fiddle, it's all a bit tight because the cables are, are quite tight. There's some velcro on the bottom that helps the box stay in place. Get all the wires in, push them down. There's a little locating pin at the bottom of the box, uh, which I'm now starting to find. There we go. Just about managing to get it in there and push down two little clicks and we're done. Well, I guess it's time to test it. So, wheel on one side, again we push in on the little square thing, make sure that it's nice and tightly on there, which it is. The wheel on, push on the square thing, that's on there, nice and tight, all looks good. Okay, well, plug up the battery again. Switch on, on the side here. Look at that. And off, just check it in reverse. Off again. So there we have it. Single engine to twin engine. Not that difficult. And in the next video, I'll show you what I do with this thing. Why did I bother putting on a twin engine? I'm also going to be putting on two new batteries as well. Uh, but when you realise what I do with this thing, you realise why I have to do it. Hope you enjoyed the video.